Hello, my dear friends, I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. Today, we're going to be discussing the difference between EB1A and O1 visas. What's the best visa for you, the differences, the similarities, and how to choose the right one for you. At the end of this video, you will be able to learn how to get a free evaluation of your case. Let's go! Alright guys, these past two weeks have been just massive on the green cards approvals and all ones approvals. We got 10 approvals all together between these two visas. 5 for EB1A and 5 for O1. There were O1Bs and O1As, so just in general O1 visas. So why am I saying this to you? Well, so you could know how many approvals we get on a regular basis for these two visas. You could build that trust and knowing that Stanislav is no BS. Smash that like button if you guys want to get your visa approved in the future or because you like my content. Let's begin with basics. The difference between O1 and EB1A. Well, the biggest difference is the green card. If you guys get approval for O1 visa, you will be approved for three years. The maximum of three years. It could be less, but usually it's three and it's one year extension in the future indefinitely. As long as your employer can explain why you need it in this company. On the other hand, EB1A visa gives you green card, and not only to you, but to your spouse and the kids under 21 years old. All right, so if it's a family of four, mama, papa, two kids, you will get four green cards. I think this is the biggest difference procedure. All right, there's, there, there's more differences. So the difference number two, it's much more difficult to get EB1A approved. I think it follows from the difference number one because, because O1 is a non-immigrant work visa and EB1A is also work, but immigrant visa, all right? And of course, the difference between coming to the States and living here and coming here temporarily to work is huge. In the practical terms, you, you could get approval for O1 visa with a very little recognition or fewer criteria. And the recipe, my recipe, all right? I don't know other attorneys, but my recipe is six criteria for EB1A and five criteria for O1 visa in order to get a successful approval. And yes, I know one of you just starts screaming, Stanislav, you gotta have three. And I know people, okay. I know people too, who got approved with three criteria. Never in my company, not because we never succeeded, but because we didn't even try. If it's only three criteria, I mean, there gotta be something really big in those criteria, all right? Like really big, like international recognition, like international big prizes, huge press, like some serious contribution in the field. Okay? If I ever see this street all together, like huge intergalaxy recognition, I would call it, I may go with it. Six criteria is a good recipe for EB1A. And uh, of course, because there's a lot of subjective things going on and uh, immigration officer may decline to accept uh, two or three criteria that were filed, not because we didn't file right, but because the way he perceived them subjectively, but still we have three left, three, four, maybe more. And of course, those hypothetically three criteria that he did not or she did not accept will play a role in the subjective analysis of the petition, all right? The overall merits, we call it. I like to file seven criteria with EB1A. Rarely, rarely I filed five criteria for, for um, our clients. We did successfully. And I can count on the fingers of my hands the petitions that were filed with the four criteria for EB1A and all of them in the sport, okay? So sport, I can see Awards, judging the work of others, being a referee, press, and the national team. And most of the time, the sport is 
five criteria because association and the critical role in the uh, in the national team they both cover two criteria but, but sometimes it's four and uh, I can see why and you can see why all right so how do you assess a good athlete well the awards give me a lot of award, good awards and you'll get an approval but other than that that's it that's it nothing other than sport sometimes i read uh, cases from the federal courts the precedent decisions and sometimes i see like people file with three criteria four for engineers and doctors i do believe this happens only when an attorney does not really know what she's doing because i'm a firm believer that anyone with three four criteria can build up more criteria while we're working on the case if of course they follow my strategy in the beginning of the case and uh, there are all the tools and instruments to do that o1 visa on the other hand give me five criteria that's my recipe for a successful o1 visa approval sometimes we file four criteria that's more for O1B visa, uh, the art, a movie, TV, and stuff like that. Never file three criteria for O1 visa. Actually, there is one case pending right now, but those are pretty good criteria uh, for O1 visa in the format for O1. For you to remember, six criteria for EB1A and five criteria for O1. Difference number three, O1 visa is much faster to get. If you file for EB1A visa and if you work with me and my team from the day you started working on your case till the day you will be able to enter the US provided that you are not in the US. A year and a half will pass. Approximately. Yes, it could be a year and three months. Yes, it could be a year and eight months. But if you get all the approvals, there will be approximately one year and a half from the day of starting working on the petition. When we speak about O1 visa, we are talking about eight months from the day when you start working on your petition. Huge difference, pretty much twice as less for O1 visa as opposed to EB1A. And uh, also sometimes I file O1A or O1B with a purpose even though we can get an approval for EB1A, why? Because we can bring you faster to the States and basically uh, in some time refile your the same petition, maybe put a little extra stuff if something happens between the, those two events. And again, get you approved for EB1A while you are in the US. I need to remind you guys that you cannot enter the United States of America on non-immigrant visa with a non-dual intent visa with the intent to file your immigration petition. This is unlawful. But I'm talking about the situations when you come with a non-immigrant intent and something happens afterwards that you change your mind. The last but not least difference between these two visas is the amount of money that you will spend for these visas. Uh, definitely you're gonna spend less with O1 visa just because it's a smaller fee for the attorney. It's a little smaller fee for the government for the government. Also if you need to uh, uh, improve your petition for O1A again you will spend less. All right so it's a little cheaper. Uh, I don't think this is a critical difference between these two visas but uh, you know, for some of you it is. Because it sounds like O1 is a better option for many of you. And I do believe O1 visa is going to be the best number one visa for 2024. That's number one in my priority list for the whole year. Uh, but there is one negative side to O1 visa that you guys should know. And if you don't know about it and you go for it and you find out later, that's going to be a disaster if it affects you. So the most negative side of O1 visa is that your spouse will get O3. And O3 status does not give you the right to work in the US. That yes, your children will be able to go to school, no problem. But you have to be relying only on one stream of income and this is you and some of you be like okay Stanislav it's not a biggie 
uh, I'm, I'm, I'm basically the, the one who makes money and my spouse, whatever, takes care of the house. And I'm not trying to be sexist here or anything. Sometimes the, uh, the males are taking care of the house. The wife is working, okay? So uh, there is no, uh, there's no difference for me. But the other side of the family cannot work. Okay, so please mind that, put that in the equation uh, and do your calculations. Stanislav, how do I know if I can qualify for whatever, O1 or or uh, EB1A uh, case? That's actually the easiest uh, uh, answer you're gonna get today. All you need to do is go down below this video. Find the link that's gonna say a free evaluation of your case. Click on it, go to the website and fill out the questionnaire, fill out the form. Yes, there's a lot of questions, but you'll give me a lot of information so I can give you a good analysis of your case. And I will let you know which visa is better for you, which criteria will satisfy, and if your case has potential. And what it means, that means that it has the potential if it could be filed within the next six months. And after that, I will invite you to the complex immigration planning where I build up the written winning strategy for your case. Smash that like button, subscribe to my YouTube, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and other platforms, all the links below. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a lawyer of the future. Your future begins here. Good luck.